I think the questions here have to do with uh, what is going to be the next federal role and what do we do in the meantime? There are accountability provisions now. It does throw a spotlight on schools that aren't doing well even for particular subgroups of children if they're doing well overall. And I think that's been important. And are we to keep that? And if so, in what, uh, in, in what form? This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, reforming America's education system. Over the past few years, we've seen the Bush administration's No Child Left Behind school reforms, followed by Race to the Top from President Obama. Now Congress faces an impending deadline to reauthorize federal education legislation. And there are a number of factors and forces at play in school reform, notes expert Russ Whitehurst as he talks about improvements Congress can and should make to federal education policies. Russ, there are a number of competing forces pushing for education reform at the federal level. How would you define these forces? Well, I, I think there are really three camps. So uh, there, there is the status quo camp. Uh, people who say certainly schools need to be improved, but uh, the improvements have to be gradual and at the margin. We need to just uh, invest more in teachers and invest more in schooling and eventually we'll get there. There is the reform community. They are the people who want uh, fundamental change in the sense, for example, of uh, evaluating teachers uh, seriously, and they tend to be in favor of a lot of federal control because they think that uh, the forces of the status quo have control at the local and state level. So we've got to shift control to Washington if we're going to get these things done. And then there's a third camp that's been relatively quiet. They are w within the reform camp, but they are a splinter faction. And they think the solution is not more state control or federal control. The solution is letting parents actually choose where they send their kids to school. And having the federal and perhaps the state money that's intended to uh, support the education of disadvantaged children follow those kids to the schools their parents choose. So what are the barriers to implementing school reform as you see it? Well, it's getting it accomplished politically. And uh, there are serious questions about some elements of what everybody, everybody agrees to. So there are strong forces against, uh, against reform. Uh, the adults who uh, profit from the status quo in schools uh, don't want their lives disrupted, nor would I if I uh, were in a situation in which my life uh, was built around the status quo. And uh, uh, teachers and the associations that represent them are powerful political forces. and so. Anytime you, you try to introduce a substantial change and you have that degree of political force against you, it's not easy to get it accomplished. Well, tell me this. What is your assessment of President Obama's Race to the Top program? The Race to the Top was really something quite new. It was the response by Congress to the severe 2008 recession. Uh, gave out a lot of money to the executive branch to get out the door really quickly to try to do something about that recession. Uh, they gave $5 billion to the U.S. Department of Education uh, and uh, substantial authority to uh, Secretary of Education Arne Duncan on how that $5 billion was going to be spent. And he produced a competition for the states to get that money. And the competition was under rules that the administration defined. So to get the money, you had to agree to do things the administration wanted. And so it really represented, in a new guise, an escalation of federal control. Five billion dollars is a lot of money any time in education. And when states broke, everybody wanted uh, a cut of that, uh, of that nice uh, federal pie. And again, to do it, they had to agree to things like st uh, signing on for common state standards and uh, evaluating teachers that were not uh, passed into law anywhere. It's just what the administration wanted them to do. Have we made any progress at all, however modest? For um, African-American kids and Hispanic kids, the progress, particularly in math, has been, has been uh, in some cases, uh, astonishing. So we've made some progress, and most people would attribute that to the accountability provisions of, uh, of No Child uh, Left Behind. And the question is, in a period of uncertainty that's created with the administration talking about waivers and with Congress unable to decide what it's going to do, do you have um, uh, school leaders uh, thinking that the accountability provisions are not anything to worry about 
anymore is the heat off during this period of uncertainty. Clearly there is a lot of banter back and forth about what good policy should look like. What would you endorse? I'm personally in favor of uh, allowing parents more choice. I think parents are in a position to be better consumers, particularly if the federal government would provide them as much information when they are uh, choosing a school for their children as it forces uh, a car dealer to provide them when they're buying a car from, uh, from, from that dealer. So I think empowering parents with choice and giving them information would be uh, one direction to go to produce improvements in, uh, in U.S. education. So can we afford to wait, or does Congress really have to act rather quickly to update our education laws? Well, we've got to do something. The, the legislation, the pinch in the legislation, is that it involved a very unrealistic set of goals for student achievement. In the U.S., uh, of course, all of us want every child to be proficient. Uh, having that aspiration, however, is different from requiring it on a particular timetable. So we required every child to be proficient by 2014, and we did not know what schools were to do exactly to achieve that goal. So the problem here is we've got a, a set of unrealistic goals. It's resulting in large proportions of schools being identified as, uh, as failing or in need of improvement, far too many for uh, states or school districts to deal with productively. Something has to be done about that. And there would be there are a variety of fairly simple solutions. I mean, the, the president, the secretary of education, could say, for example, that regardless of the provision of law, uh, no state or district shall be required to intervene in more than 20 percent of its districts. Those being the lowest 20 percent in terms of performance. Or we could reset the timetable from 2014 to 2016 or 2017. Something to take the unrealistic pressures off while maintaining clear expectations for, for progress. I think that's uh, the interim solution we need to adopt. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, or iPhone, go to brookings.edu mobile.